Today I don't sing. I barely uh, can talk. When I was about 17, a big old tractor tire blew up in my face and uh, swelled my throat and stretched my vocal cords when it cut a hole and stuck a tracheotomy in it and all that kind of work. So that's how I talk the way I do now. My wife sang in the choir, but uh, I don't sing. God just fixed my voice like it so you can enjoy it and wonder what's wrong with it. Uh, I've been saved a long time. I've been saved about 41 years, been married about 41 years. I got saved and started at Tabernacle Baptist Bible College a long time ago, graduated uh, from there. Second year, God called us to the mission field. We left, graduated, left, went to Scotland and stayed eight and a half years, started a church, turned it over to a Scotsman, come back to America, uh, thinking we was going to Germany, work with the military. Uh, but sometimes God's like the preacher mentioned this morning. Sometimes God has a way of changing your plans and God's plans. Uh, I was going to Germany. And my wife was going to go with me. But there's a little country church in a place called Six Miles, South Carolina. Little bitty place. If you're going there, you're going on purpose. There's about 600-something folks in Six Miles, South Carolina. God wanted us to stay there. Uh, we didn't care much about it. Uh, but that's what God wanted. So we stayed in Six Mile 24 years, pastored Mile Creek Baptist Church. Uh, God worked some great things. God saved a lot of folks. God called some people to preach and missionaries, things like that. And we're there happy, tickled to death, just like pigs in the sunshine doing God's blessing. We're happy. And then God, 2012, just broke our heart for the country of India. Now, I don't know how much you know about India, but there's a lot of folks over there. There's 1.2 billion people in India. Not million, billion. There's four times more people in India than there are in America. Four times more. Almost exactly four. They're literally everywhere. If you go outside, you go drive with them, Walk with them. They're, they're just Indians everywhere. There's a town called New Delhi. It's got 23 million people in it. Bigger than New York City. That's where we'll be working outside of New Delhi. Now our focus of what God has called us to do is the villages of India. 40 to 50 percent of those 1.2 billion, and I know that's a a lot of statistics that you probably going to forget. If I didn't say it a lot, I would too. But 40 to 50 percent of all those people live in the villages of India. In the villages, there's about 2,500 to 2,000 average folks in that village. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm like Paul. I lie not. I am not lying. And I'm saying that because this is North Carolina, and I'm from South Carolina, and most folks in South Carolina think everybody has heard of Jesus Christ. But they ain't. There's folks in the villages of India that have never heard the name Jesus Christ. They have never, ever seen a Bible. Sunday school lesson this morning, and I enjoyed it. Brother taught a good lesson this morning. It's why should I trust the Bible? Praise God, I've got one that I can figure out if I don't trust it or not. They ain't even got one. They have not got a Bible. They have not heard the name Jesus Christ. Now, I think the Lord Jesus died for white folks, brown folks, black folks. I think Jesus died for every kind of folks there are. Yes, sir. And I think they deserve the gospel Amen. of the grace of God. So what God's called us to do is take the gospel to the villages of India. Now the way we're going to do it is we're going to India four times a year. We're going to send Bibles, teaching material ahead of us. It'll be translated into Hindi. We'll get there, go to the village, take the Bible, take the gospel message to those Indians asking God to save some Indians. Asking God to Grace, the same way God saved you, save them. We'll teach them, train them. We'll come back to America, get more material, take back to that village 
train those people so that they can start and pastor the church in that village. And when that happens, hallelujah, we can go to another village. Start the same process over again. That's the plan God's laid on our heart. I've talked to other folks. They say that's the way to reach the villages. There's 104,000 villages outside of New Delhi, India. When we were there, the first word come to my mind is, God, this is impossible. I don't see how we can do it. And then I, I was reminded that in the Bible, Paul and some other guys, they said turn the world upside down. Amen. They ain't got no GPS, no cell phones. They ain't got nothing. But they turned the world upside down. And I've got the same God. Amen. Same God that helped Moses, Paul, and these other guys. He's going to help us. Amen. So I'm asking you this morning, get a prayer card. Put it somewhere where you see it, your refrigerator, or where your tackle box is at, or where you keep your shotguns, or your pistols, so you'll see us. Pray for us, and God would help us Amen. get there. He'd help us see folks say. He'd help us start churches in India so that they'll have the same gospel Amen. that we've got. Amen. Turn with me this morning to John chapter 3, verse 16. I appreciate you, Pastor. Uh, being so gracious this morning, the only way I remember anything is I write everything down about twice. So it's on a piece of paper. I can look at it. I don't remember my name or where I'm at half the time. John chapter 3, verse 16. Probably the most well-memorized, most well-known verse of Scripture in the Bible. But I think in my, in my mind and in my heart, this is probably the greatest missionary verse in the Bible. I was reciting it over to myself driving up here this morning. It says, for God so loved the world. That's everybody. Amen. That's all of us. Amen. God loves us. Amen. He loves those in India, those in Mars Hill, and a little town called Sixth Mile. You think, you know, this, this verse is so simple. I'll teach it to children in Sunday school. But I'm convinced that this verse probably might be the deepest verse in the Bible. I don't understand how God loves me now. I've been saved 41 years. I still can't figure out how there's a God. In heaven, I can still put up with Jim Roberts even today. But I read it, for it says, For God so loved the world. I'm in the world, so that means God loves me. In the book of Revelation, chapter 9, we'll get to John 3 in a second. Revelation 5, 9 says, Thou art worthy to take the book, open the seals thereof, for thou art slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. I looked at that word worthy, and I began to think in my mind, what's God worthy of? And I come up, he's worthy of me. Because he died for me. And he loved me. And he saved me. So there's a God in heaven that's worthy of me. Then I come up with this, that he's worthy of what I got. I mean, I got two children. I got a little girl. She's 38 or so, 38, 39, got three grand youngins. She's married to, to a fella, and he pastors a church in South Carolina. God's worthy of her. I got a son. He's married, got two youngins. He's a missionary in a country called India. He's about 31 or 32. He's over there right now. And God's worthy of them. Because he loved me, he died for me, and he saved me. God's worthy. Everything I've got, my car, my clothes, my house, everything I've got, God's worthy of. For no other reason than he loved me, died for me, and saved me. He didn't have to. I was nothing when God saved me. I'm nothing now. But he still loves me. 
You say, preacher, he don't love me. Yes, he does. I was saying he did, and God don't lie. Our Sunday school lesson said we can trust the Bible. So God loves you because God said he did. Now, there's three reasons I think this is the greatest missionary verse in the Bible. Probably the greatest verse, period. It's because we got an amazing God, and we do. He's a good God, and like the song says, he's good all the time. God's love is amazing because the origination of his love is in heaven, not here. God's love originated in heaven before the foundation of the world. Now, a pastor can explain that. I can't. But before God made anything, God loved me. For anything was for, God loved me. In the heart of God, God loved me. An omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God loved me. Forever made the moon, the sun, or the stars, God loved me. With a holy love, with an honest love. Honest. Now I pastor 24 years. The pastor's been pastoring 20-something. You're alive this morning. You're breathing. Some of you are grinning. But there's folks that put their hands or arms around your neck and says, Brother, sister, I love you. And then something happened. Sometimes you do probably you do something they didn't like. And you found out they really didn't. Because they don't now. They did three years ago. They don't now. God ain't like that. Hallelujah. Once God, God said he loved you, God's honest, and God ain't ever changed his mind. God ain't ever going to change his mind because it's in the Bible. The hour he loved us while we were yet sinners. God loved me as a sinner. God didn't say clean up, get straight, look better, talk better, act better. I love you. God didn't say that. God loved me. I was out in sin, cursing, raising hell, acting like a fool. God loved me. Amen. Amen. And God loves you. My brother got saved in his six. He never done nothing, which is good. But you know he's going to the same hell I was going to. Same what? God loved us both. So the origination of love is in heaven. It's outrageous love. One word in there says, so, for God so loved. I don't understand so love, do you? Unusual love. He so loves you. He loves you today. He knows what you did last night and still loves you. He knows the thoughts you've had this morning and he still loves you. He knows what's going on in your mind and heart right now, which I know are great, but he still loves you if they ain't great. He loves you when you're up. He loves you when you're down. He loves you when you're right. And he loves you when you're wrong. Amen. Amen. God's love is unusual. God's love is unchangeable. Boy, I like this part. All the days of your life ain't going to change. God loving you. The duration of God's love Ain't going to change. And if you delay in responding, God's love still won't change. I got saved at 24. Raised in church, good Baptist church. Went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, because my mom and dad made me. I drugged the church. He was a grown teenage boy, 6'2", about 200 pounds. I've taken the church. You said, you like it? No, I didn't like it. I didn't like a minute of it. Because I was lost. And my heart had done turned towards sin. I didn't like it at all. But God Almighty still loved me. Amen. He followed me. I got in the military. He followed me to the Philippines, to Vietnam, back to Texas. And God the Holy Ghost followed me back home. And I tell you this. My dad never read any of Spock's books about raising young'uns. <laughs> never did. He didn't. They couldn't spell Spock properly. Amen. First Sunday I'm back, I'm a grown man, 23 years old, big as I am now. First Sunday back, I ain't been to church in four years, 
ain't thought of church. Guess what happened? My dad come to my door, had the audacity to wake me up and tell me we going to church. You know what it done? Got out of bed. I'm not an idiot. I got out of bed. Put my britches on, my shoes, my shirt. You see, my dad's about six foot four and weighed about 240. He was a lot meaner than I was, and I was lost. So I realized in my mind, if I don't go, he's going to come in this room, and it ain't going to be pretty in here, and he probably will me. So I put my clothes on, and I went to church. Didn't like a minute of it, but I went because I was scared of my daddy. But you know what wasn't long? To the Holy Ghost that still loved me is what I'm saying. Still loved me. What law to one night I come back about one o'clock in the morning. Wasn't looking for God. Wasn't expecting to get saved. Didn't even want to get saved. I thought I was having a time of my life raising the devil. But guess what? God saved me that night. So I'm telling you, all your delays, all your nights, God still loves you. If it had been me, after 22 years of somebody saying no to me, I'd say, well, let's God go to hell. I don't care. God ain't like that. God loves you. Just like he loved me. God, I ain't no different than anybody else. His love's unequal. It's so, it's unique. His love's uneconomic. He left heaven, came down here for nothing so that us nothings could get everything. You can't beat that. We've got an amazing God. Notice the object of his love. It's the world. He loved Abraham. You say, I know that. Hey, Abraham worshipped idols for God. For God saved him. But God loved him. He did. Abraham was like, like India. Worshipping gods after gods after gods. Statues, cows, everything they worship. Abraham the same way. But God loved him. God loved a little girl named Tamar. Another one named Rahab. And another one named Bathsheba. But you ain't going to name no little girl Rahab. You probably ain't going to name her Bathsheba. They weren't real nice ladies. But can I tell you a secret? They're in the Bible. Their name's in Matthew chapter 1. Mine ain't. <laughs> God, lo- hey, God loves everybody. Doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you. I'm not minimizing sin. I'm just saying God loves sinners. Always has. Always will. God loves Zacchaeus. He's rich. God loved him. God loved Pharisees. So we know he loved Baptists. He loves self-righteous folks. He loves folks that's always right. All the time. He loved Paul. Paul was a Pharisee. He was self-righteous. He said he was. But yet God loved him. And I ain't knocking Baptist. I are one. He loved poor people. He loved Lazarus. He loved a possessed guy. Living in the tombs in a graveyard. God loved him. Can I tell you, God crossed that lake just to save him. You say, how do you know that? Because he was the only one who got right with God that day. Yes. And they run Jesus off. Yeah. So God crossed the lake to save that fella. Amen. And the amazing thing about it, boy, this blessed. The amazing thing about it is God saved him. The hogs, Jesus puts the devils in the pigs. They go off the cliff. Pigs are dead. They tell Jesus, get out of town. We don't want you around here. You're killing us. Get out of town. He goes to get in the boat to leave. Guess who's sitting in the boat? That demoniac guy. I just got saved. He's sitting in the boat. He's got clothes on. In his right mind. And he's calm. You see what happened to him? He got saved. Yes, amen. And he's happy. So he gets in the boat. He's sitting in the boat waiting on Jesus. So Jesus shows up, he looks at Jesus, and it says he prayed him that he could go with him. He looks at the Son of God and says, where are you going? 
You said, that's beautiful. You don't even know this fellow. This fellow just showed up. He doesn't know him. He does know one thing. He was full of the devil. Had no peace, no joy, no nothing. Now he's saying he's got joy, he's got peace, he's got everything, and it's that guy's fault. So he said, I'm going with you. Amen. That's, pretty, that's pretty logical Amen. to me. Yes, it is. Devil drive you to hell. Jesus, go take you to heaven. I'm going with Jesus. Amen. Jesus loved him enough to cross to save him. Greatest verse because we've got an amazing God. And we do. It's the greatest verse because of an amazing gift. He gave a gracious gift to us. Just in grace. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Nobody deserves it. He freely gave the gift. He says, sure it is. Take it. I give it to you. It is yours. I love you. This is yours. Take it. Undeserved unsolicited gift. And it's fully given. He didn't say if you'll do this and you do that, I'll give it to you. He just said, hey, here it is. Can't beat that. Amazing gift. No gift ever given is like the Son of God. It's the greatest gift. He gave his son. Amen. And we got one boy. That's all I got is one. This boy around. You think yours are, and you ought to. But you're wrong, my man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I wouldn't give my son down for anybody. I wouldn't. I'd die for him. No problems. But me and my wife not going to give my boy for anybody. Amen. Especially somebody that doesn't even like my boy. Cusses <laughs> my boy, refuses my son, just blasphemes. I, I ain't giving that my son for that guy, for that guy at all. But you can I remind you that Jesus did exactly that. Amen. He did. He gave his only son. He gave his one son. That's it. And I was talking to Jim sitting out there in the parking lot. This morning, texting. Texting is a wonderful thing. Yes. Skype and FaceTime is a wonderful thing. If you've got grand on the other side of the world, 10 hours away, it's great. I don't know nothing about technology, but I know them two things are wonderful. <laughs> but Jesus left heaven, and his Father sent him, and he came for us. I refused him. I rejected him. I didn't want him. Amen. He gave his son for you, and he gave his son for me. There ain't no gift like that. There's no gift. There's no giver like that at all. It was a perfect gift. See, somebody had satisfied all the demands in that Old Testament. Somebody had do that. I couldn't do it, but God's son could. He's the only one that could, and he did. He was my substitute. Man, I should have died on the cross. But hey, I didn't. I had somebody die for me. Name was Jesus. Amen. Greatest gift ever given. He was my sacrifice. My, my, my. It's a generous gift. Thirdly, and I'll be done. Greatest because he's got an amazing God. He's got an amazing gift. The boy got an amazing guarantee. Amen. Whosoever believe it. Man. Hey, that's anybody. I ain't real smart. That's anybody. I can carry that Bible to India. The brown skin Indians don't even know what they're laying. I know some of them's laying, but it don't matter for who or not. I can give them the gospel, the message. If they get, they get what that says, they get saved. That's the candidate. All I got to do is realize I'm lost and ask God, and God's going to save me. I can believe I'm a sinner. I believe he's the Savior, and believe he'll say, you can't beat that with anything. Notice the guarantee. If I do that, I'm going to get saved. Amen. Absolutely. I did it 41 years ago. Yes. It still works. Amen. I'm still saved. Believe me or not, I am still saved. Amen. I ain't perfect, but I'm saved this morning because I did what the Bible said. I'm settled, and it's awful sweet. Man, ain't nothing I've like been saved. I'm going to be honest with you. There ain't nothing like going to bed at night and not even giving a rip if you wake up or not. Who cares? 
But I like flying. When God put this on my heart, my wife's heart, I thought, Lord, hell, God, that means I got to fly. I just don't trust nothing if I ain't in charge of it. If I'm driving, it's great. I don't even let her drive. I do all the driving. I got to have a hand on the steering wheel. But I can't fly. I can't pilot no plane. So I got to get on that thing. Went over in October, and it's fine as long as it flies smooth. You know what I'm talking about? As long as it's smooth. Then the pilot come on, we're going we're to experience some turbulence. You know what I do? First thing I do is shut my eyes. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna see it. So I shut my eyes. And I'll tell you the truth, I hold over the seat in front of me. I put my head on the seat in front of me. My eyes shut. So what are you doing? I ain't doing nothing. I'm scared to die. I don't want to fly. But if I, that thing goes down, and I pray that I never do, if I do, if it goes down, I'm going up. Amen. I told her, I said, we're going to get the end of the season. I'll go to heaven and say, Jesus, who cares? <laughs> That's how it's just sweet to know you say. Amen, brother. Yes, it is. For real. I mean, it doesn't matter what life brings us. I'm saved. I know where I'm going. I know what happened to me. And that's sweet to me. It's sweet. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God did. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not saved. I ain't really sure God loves me. Well, there's 66 books in here and a whole lot of chapters. And all from the front to the back, Jesus is saying, I love you. Amen. Yes, I died for you, and I'll save you. Mm. And can I say this? If God loved the world that much, how can I love that world any less than he did? He died for it. Yes, he did, sir. Yes. I should be willing to give my life to what God loves, yes, and that soul's of men. Preacher. Amen. Appreciate the message. Everybody back.